all right people midweek report time so plenty to talk about over the next 20 or so minutes let's start well it's gonna Ben Shalom, Eddie Hearn. Let, let, let's let's we'll start with that. But let's start more so with what Ben Shalom has been saying on Talksport because we had a very good show, very good show over the course of the weekend with a brilliant main event in Fabio Wadley versus Fraser Clark. I think that the majority of people will agree. If you didn't find that entertaining, you know, I, I really don't know what more I could say to you because it was a very, very, very entertaining fight. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and people want to see a rematch. So. Ben Shalom says he believes that a rematch could potentially happen on Sky Pay-Per-View and wants it to happen this year. It's the biggest fight out there for both of them. It will happen again. I think we can be hopeful this year. Listen, I'm, I'm happy for them to run that back again. I will gladly watch it again. Not on Pay-Per-View. Neither guy is a Pay-Per-View attraction. They're not. You know, they they done good numbers in the O2 by all the accounts. It didn't seem full. And Mark, who obviously is a big ticket seller, that helped. But... They are not pay-per-view stars, neither of them. No disrespect, but they're not. Having that on pay-per-view, that's going to... Is that bench really, really? Just do it on standard Sky. People will be intrigued in that rematch. And I get probably with Ben Shalom, he's trying to appease his bosses at Sky because, you know, how many boxer pay-per-views have they done? They've done, Eubank, they've done the two Eubank Smith fights. Fair enough, they've done them. There's not been many. There's not been many. Obviously, Brooke versus Can was pay per view. They've done a few, but not many with Boxer. It's got to the point now where they're having to gate crash other events. So, for the Tyson Fury Alexander Usyk fight that should have happened in February, it was going to be TNT, The Zone, and Sky. So, they were coming in on that one. And obviously, they showed the Joshua and Ganu show. So, they're actually, to get pay per views, they're having to go to Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren and say, Can we, uh, can we, can we, can we, can we butt in casually? Because, you know, we don't really have any. Do we have anybody that we, we could put on paper? Yeah, we don't have anyone we could put on pay-per-view. So that's kind of what it seemed like there. So that's obviously Ben Shalom. That should not be on paper. It was great a fight as it was. It is not. No, it's not a pay-per-view fight. And Ben Shalom and Eddie Hearn. Yeah, so Ben Shalom, it says here with TalkSport, has publicly challenged Eddie Hearn to sit down with him face-to-face -to, -face to discuss fights between Boxer and Sky and Matrimus The Zone that the pair have never met before let's sit down let's make some fights well listen they could have made fights before they could have made adam azim dalton smith they could have made fraser clark fabio wadley about a year ago they could have done several fights before but they haven't and ugh, elephant in the living room it's not been eddie hearn you know say what you want to say about eddie hearn and eddie hearn's mentioned to connor ben again so we'll have a say about that but it's been ben Shalom. and you know people are like you know well adam is it no 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 you're experienced enough to fight for a European title, an EBU title, you're experienced enough to defend it. That's as far as I'm concerned, right? Now, if Adam Azim vacated his European title and let's say challenged a Subrel Mateus, someone like that, then I would be like, well, he's moving on, he's moving on to world level. So, you know, the European title is, you know, that stepping stone to world level. So I'd be like, well, fair enough. He's challenging for a world title, fair enough. He's fighting hard at Eubank. I will be picking Dalton Smith every day of the week over Harlem Eubank. You know? So it'd be interesting to see. Obviously, Eddie Hearn and Frank were able to settle their differences meeting face-to-face. -face. Obviously, a big pile of money did help that. But that is the situation. I will... So Eddie Hearn basically has said with the British Boxing Board of Control and UCAD winning their appeal against Conor Ben. Uh, it's bound by confidentiality. That's why you've seen no comment from the British Boxing Board of Control, Ben or UCAD. I guess together they will make a statement. At some point, does it hinder his next fight? There was nothing set. When the time is appropriate, there will be a statement. It's been nearly two years, so it's extremely frustrating, but we are where we are. That's kind of it's interesting. You know, Eddie Hearn has normally been, you know, kind of more, how would I describe it? more kind of a brazen attitude in the past it's just like the British box and this that and the other it almost seems like now it's kind of like do you know what let's just let's just work with them if they give if we cooperate we should have probably done it from the get-go maybe we'll get a backdated ban or maybe we'll get a ban that you know ends in you know August September so you know you can just take some time out of the ring you can fight in August September and we're, we're done this whole thing's behind us it sounds to me like that's the way Eddie Hearn is going now because before it was just, it was insanity. And at the end of the day, right, 
at the British Boxing Board of Control in the UK had this whole kind of end situation. You know, you have people saying, you know, oh, you know, it's being dragged out. And, you know, why are they doing this to Conor Ben? It's like, well, <laughs> fail to do drugs test. They want to know why. As I've said several times, you know, imagine going to a cop and being like, you know, this cop has an agenda against me. This cop has it in for me. Well, why does he have it in for you? Well, I failed the breathalyzer. Okay, why did you fail a breathalyzer? And was it a little, were you over the legal limit? Yeah, why'd you fail it? Oh, well, you know, it's like they want to know why. That's been the main thing with this whole Conor Ben situation. And it's been one thing after another. It seems like now we're at a point where we may get some clarification on it, whatever happens. I've said I reckon, I reckon it's going to be a backdated ban. I think that's going to be the height of it. A backdated ban, and that's going to be the end of that. It probably wouldn't even, probably won't even affect them. Like for this year, it's probably going to be a backdated ban till, say, March last year to March this year, which has already been and gone. You're fine, you're in the clear, you're good to go, or whatever, whatever, and that'll be that. In terms of Canelo Alvarez, let's talk about Canelo. Let's go back to Eddie Hearn and Boxer now in a wee bit, but let's talk about Canelo for a sec here. Canelo Alvarez has indicated that he does still intend to rematch Dimitri Bivol. I would love to do that fight. Uh, I'd love to do that one again, and hopefully it can happen at some point. Obviously, Dimitri Bivol is facing Arthur Better Biev, and that's that's no that's no mean feat. So it's going to be a it's going to be a tough fight for the winner. I don't envision either guy having an easy fight. I don't envision the winner coming out unscathed. I don't see this as being, you know, Kel or so Kelbrook. Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford on paper. That was a really competitive fight. I was thinking Crawford should win, but like, mm, you know, this is really interesting. Come off fight night, when we saw what happened, it was one sided in Terence Crawford's favour. He just completely, you know, beat the brakes off Errol Spence. That was a shock because I didn't envision that, and I don't think a lot of people did. There were some people who did, and credit to them, but I genuinely thought, you know, Crawford will win. It's going to be a tough fight, a very tough fight. With this, I can't envision either guy. It's not going to be... I, I think this is going to be a really, really hard fight. And whoever wins, you could maybe... Especially with the uh, Arthur Turbiev, you'd be like, well, that's probably the last great performance there. Because that's going to take a lot out of anyone. I think it's going to be phenomenal. In terms of Canelo versus Bivol, you know... Bivol won that first fight fairly decisively. I don't really know what else Canelo can do now. And especially if you consider it's been two years nearly. Canelo is getting older... What more can he really do there? Javante Davis versus Frank Martin will take place on the same bill as De Benavidez versus Alexander Vodsek, which is, I would rather be seeing Benavidez Vodsek, but, or Benavidez Canelo, but that is a good fight, Benavidez Vodsek. Looking at June the 22nd in the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. I love watching Tank Davis. I would like to see more activity out of him. I would, no disrespect to Frank Martin, he's a good fighter, but that's going to be fairly easy work i would imagine for javante tank davis now this is an interesting one here eddie hearn has said philip Herkovich could fight someone other than anthony joshua for the vacant ibf title on june the first and likely going to be daniel dubois now that means that the winner could face anthony joshua in september so joshua and then here's the interesting thing he's talking about joshua going the ibf road so I'm assuming the kind of whole Tyson, he needs to fight Fury instead of Usyk and this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? When, when he beat Ngannou, it was like Fury next. It's like, no, Usyk, Fury, and then we can talk. It seems like now they're kind of, it, it's almost inevitable that, you know, whoever wins between Fury and Usyk, that IBF strap is just going to get vacated. Fair enough. Okay. Hergovic is going to finally fight for the vacant title a fortnight later. More than likely against Daniel Dubois. And then the winner will probably be mandated or they will end up fighting Joshua for it. So, could be next time when that could be the next fight Joshua has unless they want to give him a run out maybe in June, July against the Dylan White or someone like that. But you would imagine it's going to be in September. So Joshua against Dubois or Hergovic. Now, personally, I'd pick him over both. I would. Hergovic at one stage, I would have said that's a competitive fight because Hergovic looking good in the come up and I thought that, you know, he was meeting the level of his opponents and, and really fighting to their level. But lately, it's just been like, God, you know, it's like, God, I, I will be making Joshua a favourite. Dubois, you know, that that fight with Miller, that was a coming of age fight. And if he turns over Philip Hergovic, could you imagine Miller, Hergovic and Joshua hypothetically? So I'm not saying I would be picking him, but that'd be really interesting. Certainly, Dubois has good punching power there. And if he lands on Joshua, best believe he's going to hurt him. 
But how would Dubois hold up to Anthony Joshua? You know, has Dubois ever, like, yes, he was down against Alexander Usek. So some people would question how good does he take a shot, but okay, I think that's more Dubois, just more mentally capitulating rather than physical. You know, you look at someone like a Vladimir Klitschko, and Vladimir Klitschko never had a sturdy chin. He never did. His chin was always, you know, was it, you know, Amir Khan level chitty? I wouldn't go that far, but it wasn't great. But look at his fight against Sam Peters. He won that fight. He was down, was it three or four times? I, I know he was down multiple times against Sam Peter. But go and look. Was he ever hurt by Sam Peter? Did any of them shots hurt Klitschko? No. He went down because he just didn't know what else to do. This was not long after he'd worked with, started working with Emmanuel Stewart. He'd been dropped by Devon Williams, Darrell Williamson, I think his name was, in a fight that he won on a technical decision. He was stopped by Lamont Brewster. He was always stopped by Corey Sanders. So he didn't have faith in his chin. And against Sam Peter, a big, limited heavyweight, but a big puncher nonetheless. Whenever he got like even remotely close and rocked Klitschko or came close to rocking him, it was just like, yeah, I'm going out. I don't know what to do. And something like that with Dubois, I think was happening in the USEC fight and ultimately he capitulated. I would make Joshua favorite over both, but goddamn, I'd like to see him in there against either one. And Dubois versus Hergovic, you know, a turnover from June to September, depending on what time in September, you know, that fight could be tough, Hergovic Dubois for the winner. He'd a boatman. So, you know, with September, that could be ambitious, just even thinking it will even be then, quite frankly. As the way it is with so many things, someone asked me, one of the first comments on my Eddie Hearn Ben Shalom video I got last night was someone asking me about the undercard of Haney versus Ryan. And as only I see the comment, I was like, I hadn't even thought of that. Well, they've announced fights for the undercard. Arnold uh, Barbosa Jr. versus Sean Com, or Sean McComb, I should say. Fighter from Northern Ireland. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be picking Sean Com McComb in that fight. Bektemir Malakusiev versus Pierre Demobi, I think is how you say that guy's name. John Scrappy Ramirez versus David Jamina. I'm probably butchering these names really bad. And Charles Conway versus Nathaniel Galmore. Yeah, not a not a stellar undercard. And it's apparently seventy US dollars this pay per view. I think it's what it says. I think how yes, sixty nine ninety nine. So seventy US dollars in the US. And I did not envision this being pay per view in the UK because neither guy is a household name in the UK, and it's on at a particularly unsociable time. And well, I've been proven wrong. It's twenty pounds. I'm happy to fork out for a pay-per-view if I feel it's worth it. I don't feel this is worth me forking out for. Will I do a watch-along? I'll attempt to, but I might have to do my first watch-along by other means. Because I just don't think that it's... No. I don't think forking out 20 quid for that. I know some people are going to say, gee, we're in America. We're and I know people from America, loads of states have watched my videos and do watch them regularly. And I'm grateful for that. Thank you. And it's nice to see, you know, like people from America, you know, from this state, that state. It's like states I'd love to visit. Watch it. And you're like, we're paying $70. It's like, I know you are paying. And I know we do complain about, you know, 20 quid. Like, what, 20 quid? But you got to remember as well with some of these pay-per-views that you are showing there. You're like, it's 5 a.m. maybe after when we're watching the ring while we're having to do an all-nighter. And Devin Hay, if you said, you know, to, I always say, if you go to just the average casual, certainly in the U.K., so you're getting your hair cut or something, you'd be like, oh, box it on this weekend, who's fighting Haney, uh, Haney versus Ryan Garcia? Who? Who? And like, it's on pay-per-view. Who are these guys? Whereas, even going back a couple of years ago, remember when Kel Brook fought Triple G? A lot of my friends would be, be like, oh, Kel Brook, Triple G, this tonight. Oh, Kel, and it was, I always say, Kel Brook was a big, because people I knew, friends of mine who wouldn't even be boxing fans, knew Kel Brook. And they're like, oh, Kel Brook, Triple G, and oh yeah, glad to pay for it. You know, stuff like that. And obviously that's different on a sociable time in the UK, but you get what I'm saying. I won't be forking out 20 quid for that. No way. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson will be an exhibition and not a officially sanctioned fight, so it won't go on either man's record. Tyson has confirmed, however, that it will be standard boxing rules, so it is a real fight. All right, well, yeah. At least it's not going on their record. You know, do what you want with that one. It's going to be on Netflix. So you don't have to, well, if you have a subscription, you don't have to pay for the fight. But yeah, like really, surely the, I was thinking Jake Paul's fighting boxers now. Surely he's going to, you know, try and do something. 
at the very least target the fury rematch clearly not clearly not so earlier in this video I spoke about Ben Shalom. He was given an interview on TalkSport. Talk about having a face to face with Eddie Hearn. Obviously, Eddie Hearn last night gave an interview with Matchroom Box and less than pleased, it's fair to say, with Ben Shalom. He says, You can talk about we're a victim of the game. They don't want to work with us. It's absolutely rubbish. When Wardley versus Clark got ordered, they pulled. They done it again with Azeem Smith, Jay Pattaya, React Poor, Dubois versus Faria. And they pulled out. Now Siobhan Clark is mandatory for Isaac Chamberlain and they won't even mention his name. You're seeing the benefits of Matchroom and Queensby working together. And as I said, you know, promoters, I've, I've, I've seen someone even say this in the comments and they're right, I've seen Dell say it. Promoters almost divide fans more than fighters, which is bizarre really. At the end of the day, promoters will make mistakes, promoters will do good things. You Like a fighter, you give them praise when it's due and you criticize them when it's due. With Eddie Hearn, the handling of the Conor Ben situation, absolutely ridiculous, really was. And I think now you're seeing a more kind of like, you know, let's just see what happens because, you know, that ship is well and truly sailed. With this situation here, I've no doubt that Eddie Hearn will be willing to try and work a bench to make these fights. The fact of the matter is, every single time, as they've said there, it's not been matchroom. It's not. It's just it's not been matchroom, you know. Eddie Hearn, I don't have any doubt that he would have put Dalton Smith in with Adam Azim if push came to shove and I don't doubt that Adam Azim if push came to shove would have taken that fight and I'm going back to the Adam Azim situation if you're going to fight for an EBU title which is a stepping stone to world level right if you're going to make the next move to world level and not fight Dalton Smith fair enough if you're fighting you know I took it real dry there if you're fighting the sub Real Mateus or looking to fight a Devin Haney or someone like that that's how much I talk my throat just got real dry there then I can understand that but you're vacating that title to go and fight Harlem Eubank. And it's just like, no. No. And yeah, it just seems like they want to keep it all in-house with Boxer. But as I said in that video, if you want, if you gain a reputation of being difficult to work with, you know, promoters aren't going to want to work with you. People like, you know, Turkey Al Al Sheikh, they're like, oh, well, that Shalom character seems difficult to work with. We've worked with Eddie, we've worked with Frank, we've worked with Bob, etc. If he's difficult, you know, I don't I don't want to be working with him. You know what it's like. You know, they gain that reputation. You're you're difficult to work with, you know. Everyone else can, you know, meet in the middle and come to an arrangement and you're the odd one out. You know what I mean? With the whole boxer situation, I again I don't wanna, you know, keep having a go with Ben Shalom, but you know, see you really notice Sky Sports boxing really go kind of down that slippery slope. I would say more so when Adam Adam I was gonna say Adam when Adam Smith left. You know, people always say, you know, when Hearn left Sky, that's when it went downhill. And I would say, well, it was never gonna be straight off the bat as good as when Hearn was there. It wasn't, fair enough. Because you were dealing with a brand new promoter, you had to give him time. Well he's had a bit of time now, and it's not got any better. And since Smith's left it's got worse it really has because Adam Smith understands boxing whatever you might think of Adam Smith he understands boxing he's got a good boxing brain and you can tell when you listen to him speak he's very passionate about the sport he does love the sport he's not just a business guy in that position who doesn't really understand the fans who doesn't really understand that you know boxing is this it's just, you know a real you know when they get like a working like a good example would be if you watch darts which obviously Eddie Hearn is the chairman of the PDC the guy who runs that is a guy called Matt Porter. He's the kind of like, he, what would you even call him? Like the Eddie Hearn of darts, you know? He'd report into Eddie Hearn, but he's running things. He hasn't a breeze. That guy is a company man, true and true. He hasn't a breeze what darts fans want. He's a company man, true and true. And even when you see him in the interviews, he just comes across as an absolute, you know what, a Peter and Rick. You know what that means. That's what he comes across as. Adam Smith doesn't come across as that. He comes across as someone who does genuinely understand the sport and care and have a bit of passion there. We're really noticing him not there. And I think GBM, the fact of the matter is they are doing good shows. They're free to air, you can't complain. And Adam Smith is now working with them. It would not even remotely shock me if in a year's time when Ben Shalom contract looks to be renewed and let's say it doesn't, GBM take over. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they did with Shalom, to be honest with you, because it's been, as I, well, as I said, certainly since Smith's left and obviously in 2022 took a backward step but left the end of last year and yeah it's 
he's got a lot of work to do in the next year, Ben Shalom, to keep Sky happy, and I don't think he's going about it the right way. But we will move on from that. Deontay Wilder's trainer, <clears throat> Malik Scott, on the Joseph Parker defeat. He says here, and I quote, I think Deontay has a killer instinct that you can't suppress, but I think he enjoyed the Graham Hancock. Let's just say that. And yes, YouTube are really, they genuinely are that strict about saying things like that. Seriously. I know it's mental, but yeah. He said it made him a bit content and understand the smaller and softer things in life. Violence wasn't the top priority that night. And I think that's why he came up short. Deontay is a killer. He's violent. That Deontay didn't show up that night. But that's not the fighter you're going to see in his next fight. Well, let's wait and see. Surely that would have flared up in camp. You would have noticed. Oh, he's not letting his shots go. He's fairly you know laxed that's going to be look if wild what it's going to be hard to get that back a while he can say whatever he wants and malik can say whatever he wants oh it's this it's that it's this nah i don't do you know what i think i know it's going to sound a bit out there but i think if deontay wilder was in a fight like against zilly zang and his back was well and truly up against the wall that might be what he needs. I know against Parker he was buzzed in the 8th round. But he was never really in a position where he needed to really bite down. Dig deep and actually come out swinging. I think maybe he needs. He maybe needs something like that. In order to actually bring out the old Wilder. If it's even still there. Which. You know. I'm not. I, I don't know. Let's be honest. I, I couldn't even tell you with that one. Is there anything else in the world of Bucks and Twitter? Not a great. Oh yeah. The Sebastian Fondora Tim Zoo fight, the rematch, is it happening? Bit up in the air with that one. Apparently, apparently Crawford is pushing to get the uh, basically his shot next. Crawford versus Fondora. That's an interesting fight. You know, as good a boxer as Crawford is, if Fondora tries to use his range, which I'm surprised he's not done sooner, being six foot six, but if he did, that could be interesting. Him against Tim Zhu again in a rematch, I would watch that 100% wholeheartedly. It was a very good fight first time around. So let's see what Fondora does moving forward. In terms of this coming weekend, there's obviously a show over in the US. It's a matchroom show. It has Richardson Hitchens. I think it's for, is it for a vacant IBF or is it, oh, is it I think it's just an eliminator. I was thinking, is it for a vacant? No. He's fighting Gustavo Lemos. Now, I have only seen him fight once, Gustavo Lemos. I might be saying the name wrong. And it was against Lee Selby in March 2022. He didn't fight then again until December last year. December just gone. He got a first round knockout. And I believe the fight against Selby was, yeah, it was at 135 pounds. So this is his first fight at 100, well, official fight at 140. He may have weighed there in the past. I don't know. But in terms of meaningful this is his first official fight at 140 richardson hitchens i was gonna say hutchins hitchens not a terrible fighter that's going to be an interesting one you know that gustav guy he was proper relentless against selby and that was lee selby retired straight after the fight so you could look at that and say well look i've never been you know madly lee selby is a good fighter but you know he's not a you know a, a world beater certainly not at lightweight it wasn't even that really that at featherweight to be honest certainly not at lightweight so That'd be interesting. Diego Pacheco, love watching him. He's in there against Sean McCallman. I have to be frank, I never heard of this guy. He's unbeaten. How old is he? 30 years old. Only a 46% KO ratio. The amazing, I have to say, I've never heard. Who has he fought? Money Powell the Fort. Great name. Who else has he fought? Uh, and I do recognize that name. That's the only reason why I bring it up. I have seen that name before. Money Powell the Fort resides in Germany. Oh, his birthplace is in Germany. But he lives in Alabama. You don't really see that much of a... You don't, that's, a that's a combination you don't see. Born in Germany, raised in Alabama. You don't see that combination too often. But that's the only real name that I recognize on his resume. Galalia Fai, back in action. Let's see how that goes. Mark Castro against Abraham Montoya. Sky Nicholson. I might watch this fight with Sky Nicholson. Because I've never seen her fight before. And people have been saying... Some have said that her stylish is kind of... Some have said it's good. And some have said that it's ugly but effective. I'm hoping it's a good style because ugly but effective. I don't. I don't really want to be seeing that, quite frankly. But let's have a look. I might have a look. See, depending on how that fight goes. At that, in terms of anything else, what else is there? If we go on to old box and seeing, um, let's have an old look. See, deal for Anthony Yard to face Boatzi could be trashed out this week. Says promoter. 
which promoter says that? Shalom or Frank Warren? Ben Shalom. Mm. All right. Take that with a grain of salt. Let's have a look. See anything else? Anything else? Not a great deal. Not a great deal. To be a hundred percent honest with you, I think that's primarily it. Its main news has just been the car this coming weekend. Shalom Hearn. John. Oh wait, 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 wait. I even done a video on it. Now I'll touch on it briefly. Touch on it briefly. Chisora versus Joyce. Yes, there has been talks from Chisora that Frank Warren. Has apparently reached out for that fight. All I can say is, please God, no. Please God, no. Let's not do that fight. Chisora, if you do anything, just don't fight. No, oh, serious. I do not want to see Chisora go in there with Joe Joyce, take a beat. And, and if he's not, if, if he's just on the cusp of being okay and, and going into that kind of CTE you know, stage, then a fight with Joe Joyce could just push him over that hump. And we don't want to see that. We really don't. So hopefully that fight is just talked about. It doesn't happen. And Chisora can just hang his gloves up. Make an announcement once and for all. I think that would be a great way to bow out. Anyway people. I will leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe of course if you haven't already. We'll see what news comes up over the course of the weekend. And yeah. For now I'll leave it there. So people hope you enjoyed it. Hit the old like button. Peace.